Okay, so this is episode four. Uh, today we're a special guest, M. Draco. Is, it, is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's her. So actually, she's a rock. Oh, okay. I'm going to give this, this intro like a bit like ad hoc, Is it? If anything wrong, you just correct me on the spot. So basically, you're a rock metal violinist currently under Decibel Studios Talent and Artist Management Agency roster. Uh, Decibel Studios is actually a automated jamming studio located in Orchard Road, which actually provides uh, they provide also AV equipment rentals and uh, yeah. Automated jamming, so it's quite interesting. Interesting fact, we actually recorded like uh, this drum video cover with Ridwan Johari, who appeared in our first episode. So if you go YouTube and find like Ridwan Johari, uh, Chon cover, or drum cover or something like that, you can find that video actually recorded there. Yeah, so yeah, maybe just start, like, we, we'll just go straight into... So how do you get started, you know, this whole violin, rock, metal thingy, playing A7... A7X covers and stuff. <laughs> mm. oh, oh yeah, by the way, actually I play like um different genres including like pop and instrumental mm. and like random Japanese Korean stuff also. Like. But I think uh-huh. it's just that um the rock metal part is the more unexpected. Like So it's kind of become like my defining identity sort of thing in, in music. Uh-huh. Yeah, then um how I got started is I started learning when I was young. Uh, so like when I was a kid, but uh, it's not that my parents forced me. I also cannot remember why, but just wanted to learn. And then um as I started learning, then I realized that I didn't really like it. Because like firstly, <laughs> it's, it's very tiring to, like you know, compared to like playing the piano. Like mm-hmm. I did play a bit of piano also. La. It's like very tiring to hold that stand. Like, yeah. like just mm-hmm. if you can just try doing this for like 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, imagine like holding something up. Before yeah, and then like every time like jump the neck over here. And then uh. also like, I think in the end, classical music is like not, not really my kind of thing. Uh. But mm. at first, when I didn't like it, right, I thought that I didn't like it because I sang. Uh. So I, I was very stubborn like to myself. Then I, I was very determined to continue learning until I don't suck so that like maybe I'll like it. Uh. So uh. I actually continued until like I finished grade 8. Then after I finished grade 8, I was like, oh no, how come I still, I'm still not enjoying it? So like, <laughs> yeah, then after that, I actually quit for a while. Uh. Uh. Like maybe two years or so. Then mm. um one day, my dad brought out this like pair of old speakers and then around that same time I also discovered like uh, Skillet and A7X stuff on YouTube. So I played it through the speakers and then I tried playing my violin over. So that's Mm. how it all started again. Alright. So wait, so so this like whole thing started like what age or how how is it started learning violin quite early on now, is it? Yeah, yeah, like primary school time. Primary school, wow, okay. Mm. So actually like if how how is it so you went through like proper violin lessons? Yeah, the usual classical route. Classical route. Mm. Ah, okay, okay. So Yeah, so after the grade 8, then I quit. La. So only when I discovered like the A7X stuff, then started mm. playing again. La. And I didn't play classical really after that. Mm, so right. mainly like pop and rock and metal stuff. But then why, okay, if you like every 7 4 then why not like just pick up a guitar and just <laughs> play like the guitar over like Ever seven four stuff. Oh, I guess because I can't play the guitar, so like I, I legit had that thought. Like, uh, mm, uh. so around the time when I quit, right there, I was like, oh no, I think I chose the wrong instrument. I practiced <laughs> for so many years. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then I actually bought an electric guitar at mm. that time, but up, okay. up to now I still can't play it properly, lah. Because in the end, I decided to, uh, continue with the violin, la. and mm. I think, uh. It's been many years, but now I, I don't think it's the wrong choice after all. In fact, it's become like a, a defining thing and mm. I feel very happy that I can uh, put the violin in a different light. Because mm. like before um, people hear my music, then they'll, if like they hear that I play rock or metal, then they'll be like, huh, how, how can violin play uh, metal or something like that? So, because um. it's always seen as a very like demure, classical, slow, sweet thing. Like, usually, mm. la. yeah, that's, yeah, that's okay. the... The that's typical the, reaction I get from type, <laughs> yeah, or or most like maybe they'll know Lindsay Sterling, who who is like, also mm, pretty cool right. la, but it's still not really in the metal genre or stuff. Yeah, so I think it was a surprise to myself also uh, that like in the end I could actually play the music that I really like. Mm. So uh, right now you're playing like I okay, you have like a YouTube channel with like a lot of like this kind of covers where you arrange the a uh, violin piece for like a metal or rock song. Mm. But but are you playing in any like sort of bands or anything like right now? Mm. How's the your involvement like with? Like, so I've always um enjoyed playing in bands. Uh, like uh when I was back in school, I did play with like the hall bands, but mostly we, we uh, mostly they played like uh mando pop or uh mm. pop or almost rock uh. mm. like not 
not much metal or stuff like that. Then after graduation, I didn't have a band and like, I also didn't know where to start looking because while people advertise, say, hey, we need a guitarist, drummer, nobody um, will ever say, oh, yeah. we're looking for a violinist. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, yellow card covers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you get or, that? Like? Oh yeah, or, or like, let's say if, if I'm going to play with other people, like, like even in the school hall band, so when they first uh, meet me, then they'll be like, oh, but if you are joining our band, that means that... Uh, we can only play songs with violin inside, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but actually, I think it's quite the contrary. Like, mm. I, I don't really want to play songs that already have violin in them. In fact, I, I really enjoy playing those that don't because that's where like I can really offer something new to everyone uh, to hear yeah, like yeah. Yeah. something new. A yeah, different thing on here. Yeah. What are you doing to all the mm. metal songs? Oh? Oh yeah, back to the band thing. So uh-huh. I didn't have a band and in fact, I was kind of on a hiatus. Like I hardly touched my violin for a while like in 2017 and 18. Because firstly, mm. I injured my hand and then I was also uh, working on a hand-drawn animation. So like, that was already taxing for my hand to the max. Uh. Oh, okay. And then after that, I was also unwell for a while. Then like, you know, sometimes when you're not feeling well, then you don't mm. feel like listening metal or like have energy mm. to mm. pick up. Yeah, So that was like some months. And then after that, I was also busy uh, trying to prepare for some board game competition. Uh. So it's only around last year that I finally really got back to it again. So mm. the the band that I started playing with is uh, Igneous Sons. So my current manager uh, is the basis of Igneous Sons. So um, we were already following each other on Instagram. Uh, so he just mm. asked if I like, want to go down and jam with them. Yeah, uh, so okay. um, mainly that's the band I've been playing with. Uh. They so, like wait, what, rock what genre? and grunge stuff, rock metal, right. yeah. Have you have any like originals yet? Um, not together la. Like I'm uh. not really part considered part of the band, or, but we did jam quite quite a few times. La. So they mm. they did have some some of their own originals. My favorite is Cope, and also their most recent one, Flower. I I did the album art for that also. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. My favorite part of like, Flower is the, the bass solo. Uh, Actually, I, I told him that also. Like, like, it's very surprising that it started on C instead of B. Like, that's my favorite part. Wow. Uh, okay, no, but yeah, that, that's too specific. But yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to see, imagine like how... Okay, I'm not very familiar with... Honestly, the only band I know that has like violin is like, you know, cut. And pretty much that's where my <laughs> knowledge... So I don't know how the, how, how do you see like the violin fit? Like, how does it fit in the band? How, what, role, what role does it play in like a band setting? Mm. Is it like... Because guitar, okay, guitar you usually just play, the guitar will just play throughout the whole song. Like, mm-hmm. for, but for violin, is it like a lead instrument? Does it play throughout the whole song or only comes in like, what, to extend certain parts? I uh, think it depends on the song itself. I usually try not to play through the entire song unless like, mm-hmm. like let's say the singer is not there then they ask me to play the lead melody, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, actually for more intense songs, I might play through almost the whole thing. Because, like, you know, everything is so noisy. So, why not? Yeah. Just just like, you know, <laughs> just join max in. in uh, yeah, yeah, but let's say if it's a, those uh, maybe slow uh, Chinese pop song or something like that, then mm. I think there are times when you have to like stop and then it's more of like a feels kind of thing. Like, play the feel as in F-I-L-L, like, oh, like mm. uh, feel in. Uh, yeah. Right, right. Mm. So, uh, your, I presume you haven't like really, as a, as a band haven't really, have you all gig like in the local scene yet? Have you uh, tried some gigs? As in, you mean with the... Have you like local gigs? As oh, a band yet? As a band, as in, cause I don't, I don't really have a band per se la, so uh. not, not much, uh, yeah. Okay. But I did, I did have some like individual ones here and there. Not, not so big ones, uh, but yeah. Right, right. Mm, hopefully, but, can get started soon. Uh, so you're actually collaborating on like television or like some. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we have project? a collab coming up. Actually, going to record this week. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. So the television, they already have a song called Castles, and ah, now okay. there's a acoustic one coming up. So I'll be uh, playing in the acoustic version also. Mm, nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. Fresh off the... I, I don't know, is it announced yet? <laughs> Actually, we also helped mix the, the television at EP. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I noticed. <laughs> no, thanks for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so anyway, anyway, I'm just gonna, like, sort of going like... Uh, are you familiar with like the whole like local underground scene, like all the bands kind of mm. idea? Mm, not as in... Um, I call myself like pretty new to it since like... In fact, at first I didn't even know where to get started until like late last year when I discovered like a Facebook group by Lin. I think it's by her. Like she seems, I think yeah. it's called We Are Music. And so Lin is the one who invited me to like one of the open mics. 
and that's uh. how I got to know some people so yeah then um, also concurrently like with Igneous Suns and then like the various things happening like the Avenged Sevenfold uh, features and mm. the Billboard Slipknot stuff so um, from there then I got to know more people like, through Facebook Instagram all that mm. so about the scene itself I'm not sure but I do follow some of the bands like mm. kind of like Instagram friends sort of mm. thing then um, when they release new song I will go and give you a listen uh, yeah Okay. Any sh- any any particular bands to shout out? Mm, I mean, I think just now I mentioned already lah. So of mm. course, first one I'll say is Igneous Suns, cause that's mm. like my brother band, <laughs> sort of la. Yeah, um, pathetic ordinary. I quite like their song called mm. Far Fetched, ah. and uh, how how do you pronounce that again? Coup de Grass is that oh, is that correct? Uh, yeah. Ah, yeah, actually I did their logo. Was oh, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So I I did listen to their songs also. Nice. Yeah, I like it and yeah. um. I've watched Orange Cove before, mm, like live, okay. yeah. And Rockweller, the Graceland EP is like really nice. Mm, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, I think out oh, of those bands, I only don't know the pathetic. Because okay. <laughs> there's this yeah, whole yeah. thing, like like the like why we started this podcast also is like sort of to bridge like you know, the whole six degrees of separation. Mm. Even the local scene is already so small, like but we're still trying to like there's still like different clicks within the local scene lah. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to branch out like eventually when we invite guests or so in like hey, the certain areas of like the aspects of the, the local music scene are really not really familiar with then they can like, reach out then spread the word also lah. like how uh yeah to reach out into because really a lot of the different sub-genres and yeah. something then yeah so that's that also lah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually okay, I'm going to segue into this other part I don't have you are you familiar with other sort of there are also like other instrumentalists that kind of does what you're doing which is like they play a different type of instrument mm-hmm. uh on like a different, totally different genre of music. So one quite popular, and have you heard of this like Australian lady called Mystic? Mm, not really. What so she basically she like, what she does right, is she plays like piano over like super heavy death chord thing. Oh. So it's just like, like, I think last, one of the Christmas or last Christmas, I don't know what. She basically did like a Christmas, kind of, sort of like Christmas medley and like using a piano but in like sort of the covering different death chord bands. So it's what? quite interesting ah. Uh. Okay. It's quite, quite popular also. Yeah, you can check it out. Mm. So... Yeah, that's that. Another one's like you just mentioned, all like in this sterling. I don't know in this whole sort of genre of what you're doing. Are there like people that you look up to that kind of have like somewhat set this path of how how this playing violin in like a different metal genre kind of thing? Actually, to tell the truth, I don't really follow any violinists. Uh. like the person I really look up to is uh, Sinister Gates from Avenged Sevenfold. Uh. Right. So it's mm. it's kind of like I wish to play that. Like I mean, of course, I wish to play that with the guitar. Like who, mm. who doesn't? But yeah, like. The way I play the violin also, like I, I hope to to play like an electric guitar, so to speak. Uh-huh. Um, but I do know some examples where like people play unconventional stuff, like so slightly unconventional. I think the Elveti. So there's there's the hurdy gurdy like because my friend introduced uh-huh. me to this band last time. So there's this hurdy gurdy instrument which is like this. Mm. I, I don't know how to describe it. I can go and like Google the, the, the picture. The, the <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Cool. And, and then the, they also have a uh-huh. violinist and like I think all the folk kind of instrument like bagpipes and the mm. tin whistle stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah, then um another example in the any oblivious scaries, they have a violinist also and they play metal. Yeah. Oh uh, okay. Okay, but why I ask that because I'm thinking like how what's your approach to like like sort of arranging the violins for all these kind of like Avenged Sevenfold covers. So for Avenged Sevenfold, it's like I mainly listen to the melody itself and then mm. sometimes I'll add on my my own stuff but it still follows the the, the melody quite a lot but uh-huh. more recently I've been experimenting uh, with with other bands which are more heavy and not as uh, so-called melodic so like mm. the the Slipknot cover that I did the song actually didn't have much melody for me to follow so I had to sort of it's almost like composing a song really mm. like. yeah, I had mm. to compose more so yeah so there's something new so I did like Slipknot's um Uncentered and Nero Forte. Then I tried some Lamb of God also. Yeah, really? actually, I wouldn't really have done that if not for the fact that like the uh, my brother band, the Igneous Sons, they uh. they wanted to play the song, but then <laughs> the singer was overseas. So so uh-huh. like yeah, I thought about it. Like how how are we going to follow the the whole thing like without anyone singing? Cause mm. there's not much melody, and so everything is quite based on the singing. So that's how I I arranged the the pieces. Uh. then mm. in the end, I decided to make a cover out of it. Uh. Yeah, mm. but do do you prefer like like working on those songs we don't have a lot of melody or do you think it's like more fun to like just play along with like the pre-arrangement already? Mm, not 
okay, I think there's there's like two different things here, which mm. is like um, fun and which one is uh, okay. Wait, no, okay. So so let's say start <laughs> with the average yeah. seven four one. Let's say more melodic one. Uh. Mm. So it's in a way easier, and mm. I don't need to to work my brain super yeah. hard. Like at most, I'm I'm just trying to listen what is he playing, and mm. then I I play for for like the fast parts. Cause for the fast parts, I I like to to try and follow as much as possible, mm. especially. So that one is more of like listen and practice, mm. and maybe I guess more relaxing for my brain also. Mm. Yeah, but for those that don't really have a melody, then that's when I really have to wreck my brain. Cause uh-huh. it's kind of like composing at it. Yeah, like yeah. improvising, trying to come up mm. with like parts that actually fit. Yeah, but mm. as in it's more tiring, but in a way, I also think it's just as meaningful uh, because mm. it's like offering something new. Yeah. I think that's partially why the Unsainted uh, cover got, got like quite a lot of coverage. Because mm. it, it's like composing something over the song and not, not just playing exactly what they played. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I, I saw like some videos online, like there, there are these like YouTube. Vocal, vocalist uh, mm. they'll take like instrumental songs and they'll just like sing ah, over sing instrumental over. songs so it's like quite interesting like because mm. you never ever hear the instrumental songs with like that kind of vocal and, and like that wouldn't touch so in a way it's quite similar so you just take like those songs that don't really have like it, like most mm. of the metal songs are just like screaming all the way so don't have like a lead melody and just add your own on top so mm, it's like yeah, something, something like different or really like fresh thing on it yeah, yeah. but you think like are you trying to I don't know some are you trying to go for a more like virtuistic approach to the violin playing or is it more like like more melodic kind of like <laughs> Wait, what, what's the first description you say like, you know like, like, like if you're guitaring like more like a straddle kind of thing or I'll yeah. make it very flashy very technical, like, very, very, technical like, but very fast arrangement for the cover songs or are you more towards like the like more for the melody kind of things Mm, I, I haven't really <coughs> thought about that uh, and mm. I'm not, not very sure how to answer so I think like especially for the <laughs> uh, uh. the fast solos like Mr. Gate solo kind of thing I would like to so called uh. show the the technical side of it like like uh. I try to play as much as possible the same mm. thing and then like maybe for as, oh, especially when there's parts where like um the same melody keeps repeating right then that's when I might try to change things up a bit by by like writing my own kind of melody over it uh. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, John, tying this, just now you're mentioning all like the Slipknot covers which kind of get a lot of coverage. So actually, this uh, this kind of interesting because uh, like how to get viral, this kind of thing is, <laughs> I don't yeah. know, yeah, it's kind of an interesting topic. Like, have you noticed how, like what kind of trends that you tend to adopt and kind of lead towards this like the videos getting more viral? I mm. think uh, definitely it's like the song has to be more recent because uh, by the time I uh. discovered A7X, <clears throat> then... Um, the songs that I play is not like super recent. Uh. It's like nah. years back already really. So even though people did see and appreciate it's not like a suddenly viral kind of thing. Mm. I think the first time any of my video went viral was um oh, I used to play uh this instrumental like two steps from mm. hell. I'm not sure if you all heard of it. Yeah, composers like the Thomas. Yeah, the yeah. Thomas Bergerson. So yeah. I, I played um Heart of Courage. Like I just like the song, so I played it. Then I realized that not immediately, but then there was this time when suddenly the views started going up and up until now it's mm. about 200 k. So I yeah. I realized why only after a while. So because it was the FIFA uh, World Cup uh, team song or something. Oh, like okay. it just happened to was be it? selected. Like yeah, recently. No, that that was the first, oh, the first video time, that okay. went viral. So mm. that was many years back. Uh. Uh, for Sleep No, so I think because they just released that new album. Uh, mm. So people on the lookout and also I would like to thank those uh, strangers on Reddit who probably uh. played a big part in helping me to bring it up mm. I mean like I put it on Facebook then like it got 10 likes so yeah thank you to the 10 people so <laughs> yeah and then like um, I did put it on Reddit then I noticed mm. that it was getting quite a lot of upvotes and comments mm. so I think people started linking back to the YouTube then the uh, the next night it went on like Loudwire and, and then that was really very shocking to me then the mm. next morning like it went on Billboard also and quite a lot of other places uh. yeah. yeah including like classic <laughs> FM which was very unexpected for me of course you know now I'm so far away from the classical route then like never in my life did I imagine that someday it will all go full circle and like, <laughs> I'll be back on the classical pitch but mm. instead for playing some metal stuff uh, yeah yeah it's also which subreddit was it like oh the sleep knot already yeah. oh. oh they okay. have a oh. sleep knot interesting <laughs> because usually okay uh, sometimes bands it's okay uh, if, if you have a band mm. typically uh, you record your music and you just post on like Facebook or like, Instagram then kind of just leave it at that then it, it, it kind of 
Is it, if you just leave it to like organic, organically try, try to like let people spread it, it, it kind of, the growth is very slow la, in some sense. Yeah, yeah, true. So, but also, I don't know, it, it, to like bands out there, I don't know if it's like very spammy to like just post your own original music on like Reddit and kind of stuff. I, I think mean, that was the first time I tried using the Reddit for my music. Oh, oh is it? That was the first time? time. Well, yeah. For the which one? The, the Sinon. Sinon. Yeah, like as in before that, I don't really use Reddit much for my uh, music. Actually, I didn't use it at all. That was like mm. the first time. Ah, okay. Mm. Interesting, interesting tip. Because like, you know, as, like what I said, very hard to, very hard, very hard to even break out in like, get your music break to break out in Singapore, let alone like, like overseas. <coughs> so I think that's an interesting tip lah. Like, but so it's, it's, I mean like original music and cover a bit different lah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Cover you got a, kind of like the backing of like, the popularity of the band. So, in a way, mm. it, you kind of like writing on your, but also, uh, there are like how many thousand other people covering the same song, so it's very hard yeah, to, to like, get the different shit, lah. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. But did you expect like any of it to even like get the kind of traction? Sorry. Like, did you expect any of this like to get this amount of traction like when you started doing this, lah? Oh, um, when I started doing it, like mm. not not really, lah, because I saw there's so many uh videos out there. So mm. like even if what I'm playing is something different, like I know it's very difficult to get seen, uh, especially mm. at the beginning. So I think at the beginning it's like uh my friends also who help to to like and subscribe to my mm. YouTube channel. So yeah, I'm very grateful to those who have helped. La. Like even when when I have very little followers and mm. there's people mm. who have uh supported me after now. Yeah. yeah. I think YouTube has changed quite a lot. Like I feel so. Yeah, yeah. like like last time I used to in secondary school like this like I don't know eight nine years ago. Like you post the covers also. Like, I just need I just need to like post like a mm. my chemical romance cover something against like hundred thousand views. Oh. Yeah. But nowadays like it's literally not gonna happen. Like yeah. it's gonna get lost in the whole sea of like other people covering songs. Already. So it's very mm. hard to I don't know like get viral. Sometimes like if you uh like I also follow certain sort of musicians on YouTube. They also tend to do like multi genre kind of thing. But if you notice. Even their videos also, like let's say, for example, Luke Holland, he's like a drummer who does like a lot of these sort of covers. He does covers which range from like very metal, like periphery, all the way to like K-pop, BTS. Mm. So there's like, if you look at the video views, right, those BTS and definitely will get more views oh. compared to like the more obscure metal genres. Mm. So there's this whole thing like, while well, as a musician, you want people to watch your videos. How do you balance what's the things that you want to play versus like, oh, those things that really get you the views. Like if I cover pop song, well, definitely, it will tend to be, get more reach, but... Mm. How do you see where... Or do you just like, <coughs> just cover what you want to cover and don't care about like... I think I'm, I'm more of like, uh, I will cover songs that I like, have some it. liking to. Mm. La, because like, I also don't want to practice so hard for a song that I can't stand hearing. Uh. Actually, my... I think the bigger problem than that is like, sometimes I want to post stuff that I like. But mm. then I'm afraid that they wouldn't like it. So it's oh, like... Okay. Um, I don't know if I mentioned before, but besides uh, rock and metal, actually mm. I really love like EDM. So... Uh. And maybe some certain pop songs are uh, in mm. like uh, Chinese, Korean, J-pop kind of thing also. So I noticed that because my YouTube has been uh, gaining traction for mainly the metal stuff, like the more mm-hmm. unique things, playing metal things. So if I upload a uh, EDM or or like what was it some pop song, right? Uh, then mm. you like get an immediate like dislikes <laughs> the moment I upload it, like it? like the moment I click refresh, right? There will be like four dislikes there, Is like it? like. Is it? within that t- very tiny duration where they very certainly could not have watched it enough <laughs> to know that it was likeable or not likeable. Yeah, <laughs> so also, it's already proven that you did. I, I think so, and also like, like if I upload a EDM or, or pop genre, right, it's quite mm. likely to to get some like dislikes. Uh. Yeah. yeah, but I think in the end, like it, it doesn't really matter. Like, I just want to play um, songs that I like. Uh. But mm. I think if let's say you're interested in growing the channel, so it'll be good to find more uh, recent songs also. Uh. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, actually, on the, <coughs> <laughs> the whole point of like posting the things that you think that like, will bring dislikes, I think that one quite mm. controversial, lah. As in, ultimately, okay, lah. Well, well, you want to post the things that you like to post. As in, one should just should just post what they, what mm. they feel they they like, lah. Mm. Yeah, and then you know, cause I think all people have this fear. Like, okay, if like my band has been all along playing this genre, or or like my channel has always been like, uploading this kind of video content, then you always have this fear in the back of the mind. Like, hey, what if I start uploading something different, lah? And people will start to unsubscribe or like dislike the videos. But I think it's also good to just just do it. Then after that, like sort of see what's the reaction. Mm-hmm. Eventually you also the initial reaction might be just okay, you get the dislikes, but then you also might have the the reach to reach other audiences. Uh. So that's that. Because uh. I think this is something like I don't know if you heard of this guy called Gary V. He's not really a musician, but it's more like a 
entrepreneur kind of thing. So we attempt sort of employ people to go and make content as a band or as, as a as a business owner also go and just make content on like Instagram, YouTube. So we always like host like talks and stuff. Mm. So people will attempt question us like audience questions lah. So people sometimes will like ask him for advice. Like, hey, should I be doing style content? What kind of content should I be doing? So his advice is always just basically just keep doing it. Just do anything you want to do and just mm. and just do be a practitioner lah. So just mm. keep doing it. Then don't worry about the feedback first. When your feedback comes, then you just react to the feedback. So I think that's that lah. So even if yeah, even if the content you think is not going to be what your audience is going to be expecting, just do it and see how it's going to. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I agree also. Like I when I first started the channel, then I used to be very like scared of like what what kind of reaction will come yeah. in. Cause like, I mean I'm new to you, so like even if people don't say anything, but I see a dislike there, then I also feel a bit affected mm-hmm. at first. Like, that was many years back, but I think now now I've also changed. Like, I'm more used to it. So like even people dislike or also nice they talk nonsense down there. Also like um. it doesn't really bother me. Like, I think what's important is uh just uh, doing what I like, and of course like as long as it's not offensive or something morally wrong that I think that's fine uh. cause mm. in the end we, we all just want to make the music we like and share it with others uh. mm. yeah on that on that note like I want to ask like, like do, do you get a lot of like mean comments or like, true comments and like if so like how, how do you deal with it like, like last time we used to post like guitar covers uh. mm. I remember my first few videos like Got, got quite some like mean comments oh. <laughs> that I just privated yeah so it also like affected quite a bit uh. so like, how, how do you like cope with that like oh do you, I, mean, like, I, I also get like weird comments occasionally mm. or, or like people will just downright say something like sorry you're not good enough yeah, or, like, or, 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 very nasty <laughs> like, wow. Oh, or, or like they'll be like sorry <laughs> sin, uh, sin gates is still better than you then I'm like oh, obviously he is right otherwise mm. why am I like stuck in my bedroom playing a uh, YouTube mm. video while he's mm. on the stage yeah but I think usually I just don't respond because like I don't feed the troll la. otherwise mm. they'll enjoy it if you get yeah, angry like give it attention and yeah. just comment more mm. so I, I think now now it doesn't really bother me much also because I don't think I'm doing anything wrong then if mm. if the music is not their thing then it's not their thing la. I mean there's also music that's not my thing just just that the difference is I don't go and like have time to go and comment yeah. or like, I don't bother to do that yeah so I think everybody has their own taste or then uh I just try not to feed the troll. So I mean, can rather spend my time uh, responding to those who, who bother to like leave nice comments uh, mm, to give yeah. my appreciation to, to those who support uh, rather than feeding the troll. Yeah. <laughs> but do you read like all the comments or just like mm, passing? I, I think I, I do read most of them uh, mm. so far because it's not like I'm that popular to the point that I, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. there's too many or what. So, I mean, I, I might miss some of them after all, mm. especially the, the older videos. Uh, but let's say if I've uploaded a video recently, then I think it's quite likely that I, I would have seen the comments. Or, mm. yeah. Yeah, on that the note about like responding to those nasty, I always notice like, like celebrities uh, or like people with a bit of like fame, they always tend mm. to like, respond to like the negative one. Oh, like, is it? Yeah, I don't know why like majority of the comments will be like nice and like 90% mm. is nice. And then like, let's say like 5% will be like very nasty and then they'll just like, they'll somehow like, try to like, I don't know, they'll just comment on the... the like, snap back and then... Yeah, like, they'll try to like, snap back and then like, they're, they're yeah. just feeding the trolls. So. I, I think that's like a very human response because mm. you feel like you're wrong and yeah. like you, you want to, to like, prove your, your point or yeah, clear your name also. Mm. So I think it's a very human response and it's probably what most of us would have done and myself also. Like, but mm. I think I, I try to change my thinking about uh, stuff. So like, as, as we did say before, mm. I'll, I'll rather spend the time to mm. respond to yeah. uh, those who, who say positive things. Uh. Yeah. yeah. Actually, we also like got on like our own Aonix YouTube channel. We did like this uh gear review of this pickup. So we did like a very comprehensive review la. We do like different settings, mm-hmm. compare this pickup versus that pickup. But one thing we forgot to do like a distorted sound for one of the pickups. Yeah, because oh. never play more play. Then the internet call us all like. Yeah. Ah. So some one of the customers got very nasty. I said, "Hey, like this isn't a fair comparison at all without the <laughs> oh. distortion." But we did. I spent so much effort to like do the video for yeah. you for free, and like, wow, you still don't complain like. So okay lor. What is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. It's it's like how uh, cause last time I was not as perfectionist as also so like let's say uh. I, I practice very hard for my whole song but then got one like maybe one note out of tune right then like mm. I also feel very annoyed when like people don't comment on the the thing like, at all but the only yeah. comment they'll be like oh it's uh at zero twenty three you you miss one <laughs> note you know that, that kind of thing yeah. then yeah I also feel like yeah. like quite quite annoyed la, yeah. yeah. But I, I think in the end, we shouldn't let it affect us. I mean, mm. ideally, like, I wouldn't want to let it affect me. Cause, so interesting yeah. thing. So your videos are all like, so like one take, you just do it and there's no 
editing kind of thing. Uh. Oh, uh, I think for the takes itself, right, there might be many takes. I like know every time ah, NG, yeah. but for the uh, video itself, so far, I I very primitive. Uh, I never go and like cut or mm, edit yeah. much. Uh. Wait, let me think. Uh, my recent, most recent one. Uh, oh, I, I upgraded slightly, uh, but it's still a one thing one. I think the mm. Lamb of God one, like I, I at least made a, a cover cover image thing. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thumbnail. So that at least like the thumbnail, it doesn't just show my bedroom or what. Uh. Uh, yeah. Because like, like a lot of people do covers also. Mm. No, you tend to like record everything in the studio. Then the video is like a lip sync or like a, a yeah. synced up version. Uh, mm. to the, mime, uh, yeah, yeah, the mime yeah. version of the video. Then which is, I don't know, where, where do you, how do you think like, should it be authentic? Like if you see a cover, it should be authentic or do you think people want to see like the studio version but just a playthrough of your songs? Mm. Oh, actually that's the the very uh, same issue that I've been wondering recently. Like is it considered mm. normal to to just let's say do the uh, recording before that and then after mm. that take a video of yourself playing? So is that normal? Because like I thought that people might want to see the exact video of me playing the the exact mm. thing that's being shown. So that's why mm. it's always my bedroom. But then recently I was thinking like, uh, I want to take my videos in different places, like maybe yeah. at the beach or something. But then, mm. so I was thinking, would, would people mind that like, you know, like would they rather see me playing the the real thing real time or or would it be nicer for me to record and then record first then go and play at a nice place? So actually, what do you all think about it? Yeah? That's something mm. I'm really wondering lately. Yeah. Quite, quite. Yeah, I think like depends on the person also. Some people they like to watch for like the the production value and stuff. Uh. So they, they don't mind like the music is pre recorded and like it's perfect. Then they mm. see like a nice video, like mm. got multiple angles, that kind of thing. Yeah. But then I think some other people also they just look for like the authentic they want to see like you playing like one shot through like how mm. how you perform as real as possible. Uh. Yeah. But personally I, I I think I too used to like seeing those like perfect ones really, yeah. So oh. I don't mind if it, if it's that one now. So yeah. Can you think about it, about it is like okay, you're recording a take of the song. Mm. So that one is essentially like your single, it's like a single lah. Mm. Then your video is just like the music video to the single. Yeah. So even so like more yeah. music. Yeah. So some of us, like some cover bands, also they approach it that way lah. So they release a studio version of like the the audio track, and it's, it has to be mm. perfect like You want mm. you, you like record it in the studio kind of thing. Then after they do a video as a. Not really afterthought, but it's more like a Supplement to serve the, the, the music. Yeah. Uh. So the music mm. will come first for them. So I think that that's one way if I look at it. Because I think if you spend so much time on the arrangement, mm. getting like well, getting all the parts down, then you want it to be like a studio version, then like <coughs> it's kind of like it's your take on the song already. Yeah. So that's that as well. Uh. Mm. So mm. the people are hearing your, your arrangement. Uh. So in a way, it's all they hearing something that you put out. Uh. So yeah, because actually I, I was just considering to change my approach recently, like re- record something first, then go and film it elsewhere. La. So mm. just, just a change from my usual stuff. Because usually it's just like my very primitive one shot on my handphone thing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I also think like, like the one shot on the handphone, like the bedroom thing also <laughs> got that like, authentic feel, uh, the very uh, yeah, YouTube kind of feel. Then like, if you do like too overproduced and you see like, wow, a bit too, a bit too much. Yeah. Uh. Actually mm. a lot of bands Okay, I don't do. I keep it positive twenty twenty. Yeah, so don't talk shit about it. Okay, so you know, like, like, like what we said earlier, like Gary B, just if I do it, just try to do it. Yeah. Then mm. you see the feedback, lor. So if yeah. it's like negative, then you know, <coughs> get from there. Yeah, yeah true. I think the thing don't worry, lah. I think <laughs> should be okay for both, and yeah. But mm. but one thing I want to ask is like, so best like like our last night, like have you heard of them? No. So uh, like cover. Yeah, so oh. YouTube. Actually, they do origins. So, so that's my question. Like, because they started on YouTube, like doing a lot of covers of pop songs mm-hmm. in a like rock, metal arrangement. La. Then they actually do have like originals also, mm-hmm. but they are widely known as like a YouTube cover band. La. So oh. are you afraid that like, eventually you'll become like, like a YouTube cover person, but like your originals will get like swept aside, that kind of thing? I think. Um I'm already sort of a YouTube cover person like, because like, <laughs> like that's what I do. I do YouTube cover. Mm. So I think most people on my channel will see me as a the cover person. Then mm. I have released... Uh, actually, there's a few originals but the, the first few is like the very embarrassing kind. So like, mm. let's not talk about you. That, <laughs> the, that's the one recent original. So uh. of course, the original uh, will get less views. Yeah. Like, like not, not even a thousand, maybe like 300 or 300 views or something. Mm. But um, I don't think it's something to be 
like I've never seen it as being afraid of that happening. Rather, I think that being the the cover, uh, YouTube cover person, right? It, it mm. will help me to get my original scene. Uh. Cause I mean, mm. I think if I don't have this channel and like the the following from the covers, then mm. my my original not not even three hundred people will see. I think like maybe mm. ten views or I Actually, don't know That's yeah, yeah. true. So the story is too mm. for me. <laughs> you also like. Okay, just a side note, we also had like this band called The Other Eye. And then we also like, okay. So we, like, we try to do like everything organically, like, okay, we don't really <coughs> advertise much then. Mm-hmm. And I'm also just 300 views. Yeah. So a bit yeah, sad. La. <laughs> same, same for my, the original also. La. Like I, I tried to push it out of it on like face group, uh, Facebook groups and stuff. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. in the end, I think people <laughs> didn't really see it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm still hoping to to produce it properly and re-record some parts and maybe put on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. You know, that's mostly on like the how to YouTube portion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, you know, we've been trying to like do YouTube for a while, so and like it's quite hard to figure out how how Yeah, especially with like the new monetization thing. Like you need one thousand subscriber then what um four thousand watch hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the one thousand subscriber thing is like we're trying to work towards that. Oh okay. Yeah. If not like I mean like, the monetization thing is not really like a priority, I'll just say. That's why everyone used to be like partners. Then they just took that away from everyone. Oh. Yeah, and just put that, that threshold thingy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But actually, if you were to start like writing originals, what was it? Oh, I haven't really heard the originals that you've done yet. But what, what kind of direction <coughs> is it? Uh, do you hear the, the one that I posted? Not yeah. yet, right? I heard that one oh. just now. Oh, uh, yeah, Memory so. from a Star, right? Yeah. You, yeah, so uh, that one is like, is a fusion <laughs> of so-called uh, okay, so maybe I start from the beginning. So mm. actually, I've really loved uh, EDM uh, since young, but it's it's not so much the whole song, but I really love the effects itself, like the EDM effects. So uh, it's like I've wanted to produce songs that mm. use the EDM effects, but they don't have the same repetition because um, what I like about EDM is the effects, but what mm. is not really my thing is like how the same melody just keep repeating uh, in mm-hmm. many cases I, like it's just very repetitive so um, for my latest uh, song The Memory From A Star it's like I use EDM effects plus uh, violin so it's sort of like pop and EDM and violin kind of thing uh. actually I, I'm also not very sure how to classify the music maybe you can mm-hmm. like listen to it and yeah. see what you think mm-hmm. so um, for that one uh, I learned the production on FL Studio myself to to produce the whole thing. So that one was the really, really hard work because mm. uh, all the technical stuff, uh, like learning FL Studio from scratch and trying to make mm. all the effects and and then like learning about all, all the different, like all these technical things that I've, I've never done before. Uh, but I'm uh. glad I, I managed to learn and produce like roughly the sound that I've been looking for. Mm. Like, because uh, before this, I also wanted to try uh, production, but I was using Reaper and mm. I think the the effects, maybe they do have it, but mm. it's, I found it very different uh, from FL Studio in the end. <coughs> so when, when I finally found FL Studio and finally managed to make the kind of uh, sound and music that I'm looking for, then it, it was mm. like, I don't know how to explain, but it was like really so happy. Like it was such a relief uh, because <laughs> there have been these songs that are like stuck in my head for, mm. for like, Ten years, like like uh-huh. the kind of the kind of music, uh, but yet I I didn't have the means to to produce them. Like mm. I don't really know anyone who can mm. produce for me, and I don't know what software I can use. Uh. So previously I tried like not worthy, but like sound bit eight bit uh, the music that I produce. Okay. Yeah. So so finally when I managed to to make this song, then I I was I felt very relieved because finally I found the the sound that I'm looking for. Uh. So from mm. here hopefully I can improve my technical skills also and and produce like uh more of such songs. Uh. Mm. So <clears throat> you actually self produce the whole thing. Yourself. Yeah. Then you learn everything like how to produce from from Internet. YouTube. Is it? Yeah. Um. I think like that. I did watch quite a lot of tutorials. Then, um, mm. there's this guy called Michael. His channel's like Michael in the mix. I think yeah. So, uh-huh. uh, it's quite quite comprehensive also. Uh. But yeah, I watch a lot of random stuff on YouTube to to learn FL Studio. Previously, I tried using Reaper for quite long, and I did uh like sort of produce <coughs> some songs, but I I didn't really post it all because it was still not really the sound I was looking for. So for FL Studio, um, I think the the main sound that I use is from like Citrus the oh, do, do you all use Evo Studio or, or is it no, Ableton really. or something oh, Ableton okay. Okay, la. we're familiar with how it works la, but yeah we don't really use it mm. yeah I, think I only use FL Studio la, so I'm mm. not familiar with the rest also 
yeah. Actually, how how easy was it to like pick up this production skill? I mean, to to me, it's, it's very difficult uh, because uh-huh. uh, it's not just this production things like the whole uh, all this software thing always like uh-huh. a, a difficulty for me. Uh. like mm. like even in primary school the computer class, I don't know why. Like like my thing will always crash or like some difficulty <laughs> until like the teacher laugh laugh and like make fun of me in front of the whole class. I still remember. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so so like so I bad. I really felt very happy uh, when I managed to do the whole song myself. Or, mm. Yeah. Uh, so actually, the the challenge is from the software <laughs> angle how to navigate the software is it like mm. how we try to understand like how okay la, I think like, more like more like recreating like that like a specific kind of like electronic sound yeah, how to like achieve like, that uh, right also so I think there's there's all the different technical parts like mm. like how to get the the sound that, that I'm looking for like all the EDM effect then ah, okay. then like even when you search the preset right then mm. like there's so many presets but somehow it just doesn't have that sound so yeah. you have to figure out how to okay. make the sound yeah. then let's say you mm. want to, to do certain effect like the mm, mm, that, that kind of thing right <laughs> yeah. then, then you also have to think how, how, how to, to do that it works, you like. cannot you cannot go and like uh like like Google, what? How to? Mm, yeah, then yeah. how to like? Mm, how yeah, to? You Google. cannot put that in words. Yeah. yeah. Like, then the then like like the, the ah, only okay, thing I can it. think of is like, uh, what? Imagine you you do the the volume automaton thing, and then you mm. you make it like you literally high low high low. Oh, then like right. something okay. a bit wrong, like cannot right. So <laughs> in, in the end, I use like the gross beat. I think it's called gross beat. So they they you can make the the wave on the graph to to do this sort of thing. Ah, okay. Yeah. Then also like go and learn how to EQ online. Then then after that, the guy will be like, okay, so now you listen. Right then, you see where I pull this thing up. Then now it sounds different, right? Right then, I'm like no, it sounds the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so there's, there's so many technical things. Uh. it's mm. like I can say out how I want the sound to 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 be like, like I can mm. sing it or like what. But then like when you put it in the the software, then like you can't just tell it to do. Then like even yeah. though it sounds very simple, but like if you don't have another uh, experienced producer or to help you, then mm. it's it can be a very difficult thing. You can't even Google it uh, sometimes. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think I think yeah that that is quite hard to actually like, communicate uh. Mm-hmm. Cause like also yeah, there's this other YouTuber who I, I can't remember who I did Adam Levy. He also said that yeah he said that basically in this day and age actually all musicians should have some uh, literacy on like uh, how how to operate a digital audio workstation a DAW la. basically to just basically to help them facilitate like the learning of what they're, they're playing also. Cause like, like we also talked about this in like uh, episode one where or as a musician la, how you can really improve is really to have the feedback loop. So you record yourself playing. Then you hear yourself and you can really point out hey, like which parts are you able to improve on. Uh. That's mm. a really like yeah, the feedback was very important to to how to improve. Uh. So in like this day and age as a, as a musician also, with like so many different type of tools available. Yeah, it's, it's very useful for you to have like to really pen your ideas down. Uh. <coughs> Even as simple as just like putting it down in like a handphone, then maybe just splicing up the audio track and making making your own arrangement. That one really, can really bring you quite far. Uh. Especially these days, so have you heard of this tool called BandLab? Sorry, BandLab. Oh, BandLab, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's like online kind of I've like. I've used it before. Actually. Oh, is it before? Yeah. Mm, used it with my friend. Oh, is it like collaboratively yeah. to make instruments? Yeah. Mm. So that one's quite interesting. Also, like if they can really push the technology further and like have like everyone con- like contribute in the session. Uh, actually, last time I always say as a joke, like uh, hey, we we jam through Skype call. Uh, then oh, <laughs> yeah, that has joke, been like a. Yeah. <laughs> it's been like a legit product for a while. Hasn't we've been? Yeah, we also tried a few times. Yeah, this is thing called. I think the the delay is too long. Uh, the yeah. jam Kazem. So like you can yeah, jam Kazem. Yeah. So they you have to <coughs> like you can jam with like local people lah. Uh. Oh. Yeah. So. There's a bit of latency, but I yeah, don't know how yeah. it works. It's but like there are rooms that you can join. And if you've got someone inside, you can like join the same oh. room, then like jam in them. But is then, it like, still happening? Like it's a online uh, thing. It was quite. It was like a beta thing. I think Bobby like gone already. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. no. I yeah. want to try that. Man. Like latency is the main thing, lor. Mm-hmm. Like trying to hear and play together at the same time is like I think mm. impossible. Yeah, but I think that at the point of time, it wasn't that wasn't really quite the goal, lah. Yeah. As long as we can like create riffs, ah, then it's mm. like good enough oh. already. It's quite quite interesting so as well. Cool, yeah. Yeah, so that's that. <laughs> I got a random question about like production. So like huh, like right, let's say right. when you all produce something, right? And then sometimes it will sound very different on like a speaker, a headphone mm. and a earphone. Or so how do you know what's the true sound then? Mm. How do you know what's the true sound? See, everything all like relative. Also. So yeah. like in order to like get something to sound good, it's very hard to like get something to sound good right off like hearing from your speakers. Uh. So you need to like reference something else that you think sounds good and compare your mix to that thing yeah. in a way. Because like. Oh. <laughs> so, like if you listen through your handphone speaker then like if you listen through your car, mm. then you, you don't have like a fixed point where you know like what what's the, the truth. Uh. Oh, Let's say you got a track that you're very familiar with like uh, some specific song then you can compare with that. Uh. So you can know like 
roughly relative to that track, how does your song sound like? Then, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Like, if you buy into like, the hype of uh, if, like, buy very expensive studio monitors, mm. they say what well, they promise you, you get a very flat, flattest response kind of thing. But the thing is, if you don't know what is a flat response in the first place, then you don't know. <coughs> so basically, you're given a product and you don't know how it sounds like. Then you, mm. you need to know your speakers first. Uh. So we actually talked about this in episode two also where like actually I do a lot of my mixes on like computer speakers uh, out of convenience and I'm familiar with the speakers. Uh. So imagine like there's a, a particular song that you are quite familiar with then you always listen on this set of speakers. You know how like or maybe what is a good snare sound or maybe your favorite snare sound comes from that song. Oh, okay. Then you always listen from this speaker. So if you tend to if you want to sort of replicate the same energy you just try to replicate it on that speaker, so speakers. Mm-hmm. So you play back the uh, same song on the speakers, then if your track sound of four flat in reference to that track, right, then you know that, oh, there's something lacking. Uh. Mm. So that's how, yeah. Oh, okay. So this this is the whole idea of like referencing to something. Also compared to like some existing track that you know. Like yeah, this. that you know and you are, and that set of speakers, it must be familiar to you. So you know how mm-hmm. that song sounds like in that speaker. So you bring that same song again to another set of speakers, then you have to recalibrate calibri- how uh, how that, that sound comes out from the speaker. So mm. maybe in a particular computer speakers, the, the snare tend to be a bit more, maybe more trebly. But when you bring to another speaker, it's like now the snare is like very dark kind of thing. So you have to calibrate it accordingly. Yeah. So your mix will tend to sound a bit darker in that new set of speakers. Mm. Yeah, so that's how the whole reference idea works. Mm. Uh. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so it's less about like a lot of people try to get or want to get the uh, flatters kind of uh, like flat response kind of idea where all your you get buy into that hype la, but actually there's no need to la. especially it can be quite like um counterproductive also like we also mentioned in episode 2 like we uh, if we were to like do it professionally like do mixing professionally if we were to change speakers you might end up like your mixes will sound worse because you don't know how this set of speakers is supposed to you're not familiar with the speakers yet la, so you end up your mixes will you'll mm. be counteracting for the wrong things so, so that's that so okay yeah, there's a long explanation to a simple <laughs> question. I don't know if that answers that. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of got it now. So, mm. so we sort of calibrate to to songs that we are familiar with, and and like we are familiar with the speaker or the whatever headphone we are using. Uh, I yeah, mm. Actually, I, I kind of forget the original question, but I think yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's along the lines. Uh. Yeah. yeah, maybe I say just like there's no like absolute true speaker or something. Mm. Yeah. Because I remember there was this time then like I, I was producing and like mixing for a very long on my earphone, headphone. Mm. Then after that I tested on on my speaker, then suddenly, hey, why the the you know the boom sound become like boom like, oh. <laughs> on the other speaker? Yeah. yeah. Right, then, right. then I was like, how do I know which one is to follow or like yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so actually on that, so exactly oh, so you cannot expect like if you go to you can't expect the same sound from every speaker. Mm. So you must like recalibrate your idea of how the uh speaker's supposed to sound. Yeah, so I don't know if this is right to advise people that okay, uh, like your track should sound good on every speaker. Uh. That one, I don't know, it's a mm. bit controversial. But I mean, it should right, like cause there's all the I mean all the the good, like so called the the top songs they they do sound good on almost every speaker unless it's mm-hmm. it's like a really a bad speaker. Or, uh. Yeah, really? if it's best speaker, you'll sound bad, man. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's why in the end we just calibrate to to that yeah, yeah, yeah. top yeah. song or what. Uh. I think you know, ultimately it comes down to like I think songs come down to the energy lor. so how it feels it make, how, how it makes you like feel lah. the thing is more important than like how does a snare whether it sounds too bassy or what yeah, it's more like the energy it, like put forth mm. I guess okay, lah, so that's that uh, I shall move on to this next part where I don't know talk about more of like the music kind of things any recommendation or what kind of music are you into right now oh um, as in like just any yeah. music yeah uh, for okay, so can talk about any genre. So yeah, I guess. what's your go to? Uh, EDM is I mean I actually for for everything not not just any uh genre or what I tend to listen very randomly. So if if I like if I like it I like it then like I I don't really have uh many bands or musicians that I follow su- super closely or what mm-hmm. So I more of go for whether the song is nice or not. So. Uh, but I think for EDM, I do have quite a lot of Martin Garrix and Zed in my favorites. Right. Yeah, and then for metal, like I also don't follow like all their songs and stuff. But mm. I will go to those like, Spotify playlists or what. So I think there's some uh, Avenged Sevenfold, there's Skillet, then 
I prevail uh, auto bridge and like um uh, I was like, kill switch engage there's there's some here and there oh, and okay. then for for non English like Japanese one maybe one okay rock and uh, my manager so introduced me to band mate la. so I I like that <laughs> oh. band quite a lot actually I listen to quite a lot of their songs Do you listen la. to baby metal. Oh, I, he also introduced me to that. I, I, mm, I think more metal. more band more band made so far. But I did listen to baby metal, so yeah. So I I do quite enjoy this stuff. And then, uh, for Korean, I quite like Park Hyo Shin. Like it's not not the metal stuff lah. It's like ballad and uh. OST sort of thing. Um, still got one. Actually, I I listen very randomly. Like there's some random anime songs, and then there's instrumentals oh I quite like listening to guitar instrumentals sometimes like uh, Pliny's mm. Selenium Forest is like my right. I really love that song uh. did you yeah. go for the, the Pliny yeah Pliny I know song? he came but I, I didn't manage to attend uh. oh, okay. and then uh, I can find our full set video <laughs> on our YouTube oh, channel okay. and recorded the whole thing on Angel on Vivaldi also yeah okay. oh, okay. I listened to quite a lot I remember he had like like this whole list of songs which were named after the, the what, what do you call it I know the serotonin uh, dopamine oh, uh, oh. adrenaline yeah, like all the songs that I listened to yeah, yeah all the chemicals yeah yeah one album is like all the dot dash dot dot dot, dot dash, I don't oh Moscow like Moscow thingy I don't mm. know what is it called and like then, Angel Vivaldi yeah, quite, yeah so cool. like Angel Vivaldi Pliny uh, Intervals I, I quite enjoy this kind of like guitar instrumentals also damn I'm going to do like a instrumental cover of in the violin instead of like the guitar <laughs> yeah. I can try something like that actually I really love to to like learn the guitar properly one day so maybe I should put more time into it or. but just do the cover on the violin no? then like just, <laughs> just replicate the guitar parts is that even possible like to do that probably like, possible yeah the guitar you, okay like, guitar you have like bands and stuff but with the band yes. how do you replace oh, I can, it can, I can, can slide, slide, uh, slide uh, yeah. yeah sort of like, I think yeah, maybe hmm. you should try it have you heard of this band called Polyphia? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, they currently play a lot of like, electronic music trap kind of mm. stuff with like guitar stuff also. Actually, they are, they are like, revolutionized guitar music a little bit. Mm. Like, they really infuse like the, 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 the kind of like, electronic music into the guitar thing. It really spice yeah. up how the guitar can really sound. Mm. And their playing style is really very, very unique. I can say that no one else has really done it until now. <laughs> yeah, until now. Oh. So that's just quite interesting. <clears throat> but in, in your definition, like, what, what constitutes like a good song that you would like? Because you said like EDM songs like a bit too repetitive and like you don't really like that. Or mm. like, what, what makes a song stand out to you? Let's say the EDM song, uh, hmm. even if it's repetitive, but like, let's say I like that part that's repeating then I'll still oh. listen. So, so okay. it, it does depend. Uh, but um, I think the the EDM songs that I tend to like are, what, what's that? You know, it's like, sort of like, goes into pop also. Uh, so there's, there's mm. the, it doesn't just keep repeating or what. Uh, I, yeah, then, um, I also noticed that I like those with the, you can hear the, the so-called the bass melody. So if it's very, actually, I, I'm not, I don't know what's the terms for this, uh, but let's mm. say there's a song that's so-called very light sounding like like maybe there's a singer but then there's not much bass there then like it's not really my thing uh. like you hear, like to hear like the bass like playing more notes is it? How, <laughs> like, how like carrying say, the uh? music kind of thing mm. rather than just like chords then the bass just follow the chords like okay firstly between mm. like a singer just singing clean versus like with with the so-called bass melody notes, then I would definitely choose the bass melody. Uh. Bass. I'm not sure how to explain. Let me see I can think of any... Uh, <laughs> this comes back to the problem of explaining things in the words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how to Google when you don't know how to Google that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm, maybe i just list a few mm. EDM songs that I like, but, but I cannot think of any that are like not my thing now because like yeah. I, I have forgotten those that are not my thing. Uh. But those I like are like... Um, Maybe Martin Garrix, uh, These Are The Times, and then High On Life, No Sleep. And then Z, like, uh, there's I Want You To Know, Clarity. So, like, all these have, like, the the bass plus the... The bass itself also has, like, the, the melody, la, sort oh, okay. of. Yeah, not, not sure whether my explanation is doing any good or not, but yeah. I think we roughly know what you mean, but... Because uh, we also don't mean, like have any formal music training. Uh, so, mm, yeah. so so like maybe compared to, you know, there are some songs which are like maybe quite 
chill but then like it feels mm. a bit floaty like like the whole thing very floating so mm. that one is not really my kind I like right. those with the uh, so-called heavier uh, more driving kind of thing. Base, yeah kind of not necessarily like like metal kind of mm. uh, like you know to the point that it becomes like loud and noise mm. but but just the fact that the there's a bass to drive it uh, mm. be it the melody or something like that like some bass, bass movement in the song yeah some professionally segue into do you have any like uh new projects or new gear to introduce? I like, try to okay, we have this segment like we want to like get people to introduce something that mm-hmm. sort of like changes their workflow in like the music or okay. some new recent gear purchase. So we can like yeah. Do you have any like new kind of recommendation? Um I can show you all the the pickup that I'm using uh, for my violin. And we just oh. talk a bit about like roughly oh, how, how to use a violin. Uh. Cause like people uh I think everyone here is probably quite familiar with guitar, drums, but like, mm. you know, people are not familiar with... Is, is this inside the video or you want to like, like change the it's angle? It's in the video. Yeah. Okay, let me but, see. But yeah. for your video covers, <coughs> you still use a mic lah. Oh yeah, uh, maybe I'll talk about this first. So, at first, right, up to recently, wait, uh, the zip is stuck exactly Until now. in the, the thing that... Uh, yeah. yeah, so for all those... All <laughs> those I don't know how, but it got stuck exactly in the handle. <laughs> so now I can open it. Oh my god. Um, narrate what's happening for all those that are not watching the video. So basically, ah, okay, the okay. zip got stuck. Ah, the zip got stuck exactly in the middle of the handle. Yeah, the, but the I managed to get it. Groove of the handle. Ah, okay. So this is something new that is not seen in your videos here, is it? Yeah. Actually, up to uh, like the last maybe... No, never mind. Um, up to the last the about three, two or three videos. Uh, I have not even used a mic. It's just directly my phone. Oh, <laughs> so like, is yeah, it an iPhone? Yeah, then like oh, my, yeah. my friend always comment like, you know, for your primitive, uh, for your primitive videos, they are getting quite a lot of views. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. surprisingly the iPhone sound is it's actually iPhone good. has the best mic so far. Like, like we have, like one friend like always like records his drum videos with the iPhone and surprisingly it doesn't like clip la. so yeah, wow, this, it always like, sounds very good mm. like I always magic. post like uh, Instagram stories of geeks and my friend always come and say like please mute the video cause like please, please mute the audio cause like it's always like too distorted and you just yeah. like skip my <laughs> stories oh, t- yeah so now I always just mute the audio uh, oh yeah so you're talking about the uh, this pickup okay so before the pickup so at first hmm. it's actually just my phone ah. okay. then um, after that I got a Aston mic so I used that more recently mm. in my YouTube videos so I use that for violin and for singing as well then um, for jams and like performances now I have this thing called uh, it's called the band 2 so it's, band two. it's by Headway uh, like H-E-A-D-W-A-Y so I ordered it online um, and so far I haven't seen any other pick up like this because I did some research uh, before this I just didn't have any pick up like when I did performances because um, previously my my <coughs> my bands were like uh, not not so noisy songs uh, so I uh, so <laughs> there, there wasn't a need to to like uh, have it super loud or what but recently it's like um, if play metal or what then can't hear my violin at all because mm-hmm. all the other instruments are amped up and stuff so I got this uh, pick up I just need to put it around the violin Let me just show it around the okay so basically this band is like a it's basically a long like plastic strap yeah it looks like a, it's like yeah. a quarter inch it's like a velcro jet. strap thing so um normally all other pickups right you have to modify your violin like the bridge part uh, or something like that I'm, like I'm not mic, I'm not uh, familiar with that of course I've never used that but I know that you need to modify the violin itself so for this one right I can easily take it uh, okay thanks thanks I can easily uh, remove it and put it back uh, so um Oh, okay. So it hugs like the center part of the. Uh, the bottom center part, yeah. Uh, like I just put it around here. Yeah. So whoever's listening, basically it's like a like a large velcro velcro strap thingy that basically wraps around the violin, like directly behind the bridge, uh. Yeah, like that. So after I wrap it around, then this time I'll just secure it. Then I can uh, connect the the jack in here, yeah. la. So it's the same like the normal guitar quarter inch stuff. So it's it's very convenient. La. The only issue that um me and like other people notice is that this this velcro itself uh seems to come out after uh, a while, like uh, okay. yeah. But I think uh compared to uh like having a pickup that needs to modify or I think it's, it's still okay because uh, mm. let's say if it's really an issue right all you have to do is to 
maybe change change the velcro yourself or, yeah, or, or like velcro. you know just just primitively tie it here yeah, the, the world of today is primitive uh, my video primitive <laughs> the thing also it's primitive. quite interesting that I've yeah. never seen anything like that yeah same used before I don't know today like is there anyone like professional using something like this I haven't I'm I'm like not any, sure, but like when I search for um pickups that that don't need to modify the violin, this was the I think one of ah, the okay. very few or maybe the only thing that I found, uh, and mm-hmm. it seemed to have a lot of good reviews. But um, so I'll say this is very good for for like convenience and for performances, mm-hmm. jams, all that. But between this and the mic for for recording itself, like like uh. Mm high quality like studio stuff I will still mm. use the mic uh, because right. when you use this and then you line into the the computer right, then I notice that it tends to pick up all your movement so like let's say oh, here okay. right, then, then like I eat, uh, okay. like you know eat, then, then yeah. like the contact with my neck also then I think also got a bit of the creaking sound yeah. whereas mm-hmm. the the mic mainly will just pick up the, the sound that you want and, and at most like maybe the sound of the bow scratching the thing which you can mm. EQ out uh, yeah right 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 interesting mm. then uh, maybe I can just talk a bit about like uh, mm. violin stuff uh, cause yeah. very basic stuff uh, but I think cause people don't usually touch violin so they don't know yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. mostly just touch like guitars and the guitar. <laughs> just a stereotype <laughs> hopefully we get more violinists into the ah uh, okay the so audience. so actually right before you, you usually we don't just take the violin and play already yeah, because mm. it's it's very slidey here yeah, it's too smooth so there's this thing called the shoulder rest I don't know whether it's like too, too basic or, or like what else so, but, uh, but okay. yeah so when when we put this uh on the the violin then it, it helps to stay on the shoulder like, otherwise it's, it's very difficult to 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 mm. like uh like you know between mm. your your neck and your shoulder because you start sliding. And then, um, for the bow to, to actually produce sound on the strings, right? Uh, we need to apply the, the rosin to the bow. Of uh. course, like, people always ask, like, what's this thing? It looks very edible, right? Mm. Ah, this one. Hey, what's it called again? Ro- rosin. Mm-hmm. So, okay. it looks like jelly and stuff. So, I think the the first question is always like, can we eat it? That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, but you're supposed to rub the bow strings over the rosin first. Otherwise, like, if you get a new bow and the violin, then you just try playing, right? Then the sound won't come out at all. Mm. Right, right. Yeah, so um, it helps to create the friction. Or. Then I'm using the and Andrea Sanctus. So there's actually different brands. Uh, like there's there's some that's like maybe four dollars. Then this one's actually uh one of the more pricey ones. Uh. And it lasts for very long because like you, you rub the bowl so you, you won't rub out much. Uh. But mm. the problem is every time you drop it <laughs> Then you break into a few more pieces. <laughs> so uh, I think my my previous one lasted like almost ten years like that. But then uh, by the time I dropped it again, right, then it broke into too many tiny pieces that could not be salvaged. <laughs> so I finally uh, went to buy a new one. Then I bought the four dollar one. And then like I noticed that my sound started becoming very scratchy, like compared oh, to okay. previously. Yeah. So I figured that it's probably the rosin. Then like um went to the store, and then uh. Because I also have a bit of nose allergy, right? Then this kind of thing pro- produces powder, uh, like uh. when you play, right? Then if you just apply the rosin, right? Then the powder will come out. So sometimes I play, right? Then I'll sneeze. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then, right? The, <laughs> the guy recommended me this uh, anti allergy uh, rosin, right? It's oh. not this one, uh. So I tried that one. Then uh, I noticed it sounded good, like it would sound good at first, but then after a while, it, the effect seems to wear off, like. Even though I'm not sneezing, right? But the the bow becomes quite slidey. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So in the end I got the more expensive one. I think this one was like 60, 70, like that. Wow, for yeah, but four dollar one. Yeah, compared to the four dollar one. But yeah. after I got this, then the sound really became much like smoother and, and not scratchy anymore. Mm. Yeah, and I think it's quite worthy because as I mentioned, my previous one also lasted like ten years. Cause it, mm. it doesn't finish out that fast. Uh. So it will last a few years, uh, I think. Unless I drop it, but I'm not gonna <laughs> drop it again. Yeah. <laughs> The okay. ironic thing is that people always like, okay, I'll buy, I'll upgrade my instrument or what. Mm. But actually, it's the smallest thing that, that really kind of like. Yeah, yeah. Even when you play I guitar, agree. also. Actually, it all starts with the strings. Uh, you chip out and don't want to change your rusty strings, then mm. that's kind of the guitar's going to sound like shit. Lah. Mm. So, <laughs> even if you use like the picks also, the, the thickness of the picks, it really matters on like how your guitar, how bright your guitar will sound, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so all that, you know, people need to be cognizant of that. Lah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One thing I'll ask is like, uh, so for like guitar guitarists, uh, 
guitarist always got a lot, a lot of like guitars so you can just upgrade your guitar but like what's the price point for like a student violin then like the next upgrade I know it's like the price difference can be quite staggering is it yeah um, I think I know they probably have some that are like less than hundred dollars uh, mm. but I, I can't really remember you know because like for me I I don't this one I bought it like 12 12 years ago and like oh. after that I've never gone to to like try any more violins <laughs> like this this is my final uh, that's, that's what I intend uh, uh. Okay. so uh, but I remember um Oh, because there was this one time I, I worked with Make a Wish Foundation, right? So mm. one of the wishes was like, I think his first wish was to go scuba diving somewhere, but they said cannot. So his second wish was that he wanted a violin. So at that time, they happened to know me also. So mm. um, I went with them to to like pick the violin. Then I think I played like a $600 and a $1,000 violin. So I think both of them sounded good and the 600 might have even sounded better than the 1000 mm. So okay. I think we we got the 600 one. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah, I think... So like, I think maybe in the few hundreds range is, is pretty... It's quite decent already. Uh. Sounds cool. Uh. Yeah. And the, the bow also. Uh, the, the bow is a separate thing. Mm. <laughs> uh, how much? Uh? That, that one, I, I think I'm, I'm also not sure. Uh, so I can't really <laughs> comment much. Because like... This is not like I have a lot. This is like my final one. So I, mm, I don't yeah. I didn't go and try like a lot or what. Oh, I said for the let me just mention, right? So So basically taking out a bow. So the bow, right? Mm. Uh when you use it right, then you have to turn this to tighten it. What's it? Uh you just turn it right, then uh. the this part will tighten. So the space here will increase. Because uh. if if it's Loose right, then like you you play then. Uh, let me see so where. basically, it's like a okay. Actually, maybe can't can't really tell now, but a knob like at the bottom. Of yeah, the there's a knob here. So when you turn it, right, you see that this thing is starting to tighten. Oh okay. Then um, after you are done, right? So the the main lesson learned is okay. So you tighten it to play lah, cause uh. cause if it's not tightened, then you can't really play properly ah. Hmm. So, yeah. Then when you're done, right, you must remember to to turn it back and like <laughs> not leave it tightened, okay, cause uh. otherwise over time uh. It will start to stay that way. Then when you try to, uh, it will stay like that. But yet oh, it's okay. not tight. So oh. so in a way you're you're like spoiling it if if you don't uh untighten it. So okay. I think that was something that I didn't know. So my previous bowl, um, remember I told you all like after I finished grade then I quit right. Mm. Yeah. So I think at the the last time I put it back right, it's I didn't. Uh, uh, yeah, it's still in the tightened state. So um, even though I can still play with it right, it's it's not as easy to handle anymore so eventually I thought uh, since I'm going to be continuing this seriously again I bought another bow yeah mm. of course um, left it tightened for too long so it's, it's not the same anymore right right yeah right. so just remember to untighten the bow so this is something like they like I don't know if you learn violin it's not really taught per se uh, I can't remember. I think my teacher probably <laughs> might have said it before, but I like, you know when I quit that time, then I probably didn't know that that's the last time that I'll pick it up. <laughs> then I just like left it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I miss. Yeah, probably not very intuitive or so. Mm. I think the thing is like like a it's like a trust word thing for like guitars, right? So oh. it's like for those who cannot see, it's like a knob. So you turn it, and the the wooden part of the bow straightens, so. mm. oh, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. so it's like a trust word where you turn your trust word and your neck straightens or oh. or bow depending on how. How, how much like then yeah. the rod is inside your guitar oh. yeah yeah, yeah. it's quite yeah, amazing yeah. that you can I don't know like stick to one instrument for like 12 years no yeah. guitarist has ever done that <laughs> I think that's a good thing about like <laughs> being yeah like you don't have like gear yes. acquisition syndrome yeah like wait cause I think like you don't go on YouTube and people like you see videos people keep pushing you like advertisement and stuff to like get new stuff like yeah, classical music is not that commercialized in that sense yet. Oh. Yeah, because the violin, okay lah. Because oh, guitars are very fancy, like wow. Yeah, the one guitar from another is very distinctly different lah. But it's not very apparent for violins and classical instruments, is it? Uh, actually, uh, starting from like when I was young, right, I did have mm. to change violin a few times, but that's more of a size problem because mm. they they have like from the kid size to the full size. Ah. so now this is the full size violin, no? But after that, um, I didn't change already, but about the acquiring different violins thing, for mm. me, like, I didn't really think much about it. Of course, like, I'm very happy with this violin. But I do think there are also, like, 
maybe there's different kind of electric violin out there. Mm-hmm. In fact, I was considering like more recently whether I should try electric also. Of course, in a way, it's a different sound also, a different mm-hmm. kind of effect also. Then um, another thought I was just having randomly is whether I should get a cheaper uh, violin, like, you know, second so-called backup violin. So if I want to go do funny stuff, like shoot funny MV outside, well, then, <laughs> then maybe I, I just bring the cheaper violin uh, or something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But so I, I'm not really sure whether it's a violinist thing or, or is it just me la. Like I, I didn't really think about like buying a few or something at first. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very refreshing thing to hear. Like every time <laughs> So every time like if we have a past few episodes we've been asking people, hey, what new gear you are you into now? Yeah. <laughs> so like we kind of like promote like people getting more gear, so but okay lah. Mm. Mm. So pro tip Just spend time Working on your craft Instead yeah, rather than <laughs> of getting, getting New equipment New equipment To fix up your flaws Yeah <laughs> I think that's uh, Pretty much all the topics You want to cover Do you have any like Last Things you want to plug Right mm, now Last thing Do you know One question I kind of like Forgot ah, okay. Let me You can plug sure. first Let me try to recall What's my question Things to plug Nothing much I said like You can look at this <laughs> You can plug your mascot. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not for sale or anything, like, but you know, just just for your delight. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a duck. Like, no one knows it's a duck or chicken or now maybe it's a bunny or so. So basically yeah. for all those listening. Oh, oh, uh, the ears are removable as you can see. <laughs> it's a duck with a, I don't know, a, a bunny violin. ears and a violin. Yeah. yeah, so actually my friend Ying Xue bought this uh, chicken duck bunny. I don't know why. But yeah. Comes from the meme, you know that meme where the duck holds the the knife. Like it's a very cute duck, but yet it's threatening with a knife. Yeah. So there's a knife here, as you can see. Then, uh, when I met up with her, we we made the violin and the and the ears ourselves uh, to look like the mascot that I drew recently. Uh. Cause recently I've been drawing like this uh chick with a violin and bunny ears thing like on my Instagram and stuff. Yeah. So now there's like a real life mascot. Uh. <laughs> I nice. put it in my my video. That's quite funny. Like recently, um, Avenged Sevenfold they shared my video on their Insta story. <laughs> I just think it's so funny. Like how this ended up there. So I, I put it like next to me <laughs> when oh, I was okay. playing. Yeah. Then on my wall, so there's like a portrait of this without the bunny ears. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just just for your delight. Okay. Do you have any name for it or? Not yet. Maybe oh, yeah. you can suggest for me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it'll, it'll yeah. just be always called the the what the, the bunny violin chicken duck. Chicken duck? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, should we talk about the, the music sanctuary stuff? We are waiting for the IEMs uh, from oh. Music Sanctuary. So, yeah, they, they're very nice. So, sponsored one pair of IEMs. Then, um, they even gave me the option to customize the IEMs. Uh. They haven't mm. arrived yet, but. Yeah, can can show you all when it comes. So basically, one side I put my logo, and then the other side is this. Uh. <laughs> and it's quite uh. funny because like we have to liaise with with uh, them. <laughs> it's like in all the emails, then they're like, uh, have to talk about this chick. Then they're like the side with the chick and the bunny. Chick. <laughs> yeah, so it just becomes very funny. Uh, the whole mm. thing. Yeah. <laughs> have you thought about a question? I can't, I can't remember already. The question has slipped <laughs> past. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's nothing else to plug. Any. Okay, you can check out her recent uh Every Seven Four video, right? What song was mm-hmm. it? Uh? Mm-hmm. Oh, that one uh I haven't put on YouTube yet, but cause oh, uh oh. Avenged Seven Four just released a new song. Technically mm-hmm. they already recorded it like many years back, uh, but then oh. they suddenly released it like Is it? three three, four days ago, I think. Mm-hmm. So the day after they released it, then I I played a part of it on Instagram. Uh. So they, they were sharing quite a lot of uh people's videos on their new song uh, to mm-hmm. promote. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so I'll probably cover the song in full sometime later. Mm. Yeah, we just end off top five Avenged Sevenfold songs. Wow, there's so many. Uh, <laughs> or maybe I'll, I'll list the... Okay, there's two which I would like to say because I think they are more so-called underrated. Uh, but I uh. really, really love them. Uh, one is Fermi Paradox. Things from the stage album, should be. And then the other one is 4AM. The 4AM is one of the older albums. And uh-huh. it's like super underrated. Like when I found it on YouTube, then uh, there are not many views. But it's like really one of my favorite songs which I've been listening to for many, many years. Uh. Mm. Then, of course, I also like the, the more known ones like... Uh, Afterlife, Beast mm. and the Harlot. And then there's critical acclaim, which is not 
not say it's my favorite out of all the Avenged Sevenfold, but that's like my go-to um, whenever I I need something to cheer me up. Like let's say if if I'm playing in some tournament, then then I lost my game, right? Then if I hear sad songs, then I'll probably just feel very sad. La. Then I'll just go listen to that song, then I'll, I'll feel much better after that. La. Just something to take my mind off uh, current stuff. Yeah. Okay, I guess we can end there. So, yeah, I got anything, you know, you can check out her YouTube channel. Uh, what's the YouTube channel? Uh, M Draco. M D R A K O. Yeah. So, you have a lot of like YouTube uh, different binding covers and Instagram. Do you want to plug Instagram? Yeah, Google? same also. Uh, M Draco. Yeah. yeah I'm, okay. I'm more uh, active on Instagram lately. Yeah. You can also follow her Facebook page also, right? There's a Facebook page. Mm. Yeah. Also it, uh, same. It's Draco Violin. So, facebook.com slash Draco Violin. But if you search M Draco, I think it will come out also. Right, yeah. cool. Yeah, so let's check out the social media. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. Okay. Hope yeah. you all had an interesting insight <laughs> of like a violinist. Yeah. Mm. Right. Uh, thanks so much for having me on this show. Yeah, and thanks for watching our podcast. Mm. Right. See you all next week. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Thank you.